Welcome everyone. Today finds me in Scottsdale, Arizona, where we're going to examine the charmed life and tragic death of actor Bob Crane. Bob Crane was best known for playing the lead character, Colonel Robert Hogan, in the 1960s sitcom, Hogan's Heroes. And while Crane's story started in Connecticut, it ended behind me in these apartments with his tragic death. It's in this apartment complex where Bob Crane was found bludgeoned to death on June 29, 1978. Bob Crane's life in show business started as a disc jockey. After a successful run as a DJ in New York City, he was brought to Los Angeles where he became the number one disc jockey in that city. That led to television appearances, including a recurring role on the Donna Reed Show. His big break came in 1965 when he won the role of Colonel Robert Hogan in the television sitcom Hogan's Heroes. A highly successful series, it ran from 1965 to 1971 and it earned Crane two Emmy nominations. But there was also a not so pleasant aspect to Bob Crane's life that eventually led him to this apartment complex and his death. At some point during the run of the series, Crane's co-star Richard Dawson introduced him to a man named John Carpenter. No, not the director, John Carpenter. Although it is the same Richard Dawson that most of us know from television's Family Feud. During the 1970s, Dawson was a high profile star in the television game show circuit. He was a regular on Match Game before earning his own show, Family Feud. Well, how does he fit into all this? Well. As I said, he introduced Bob Crane to a man named John Carpenter. John Carpenter worked for Sony Electronic, and it was Carpenter who got Bob Crane interested in video recording. Now today, anybody can record videos with something as simple as a cell phone. Back then, it was not so common, and it was very expensive. So Crane and Carpenter became friends, and they started hanging around with each other, and things turned kind of dark. The two of them started spending time at nightclubs and bars, and they would pick up women, bring them back, and they would video record their romantic encounters. And although I've never seen any of the videos from what I've heard, it was some pretty racy stuff. Absolutely X-rated. And although we'll never know for sure, there are some claims that the women were recorded secretly. Others say that they were active, willing participants in their recordings. So as the years went on, Hogan's Heroes ended and Bob Crane's career started to decline. And he started to do dinner theater, traveling the country doing plays. At one point, for a short period of time, he returned to television in 1975 with the Bob Crane Show. It wasn't very successful. It didn't last long. 13 weeks. It was canceled, and Bob Crane was back on the dinner club circuit. And that's what brought him to Scottsdale, Arizona in 1978. During June of that year, he was performing in a play called Beginner's Luck here in Scottsdale. On June 29th, Bob Crane was living here in room 132A at the Winfield Apartments in Scottsdale. When he failed to attend a lunch meeting, his co-star, Victoria Ann Berry, decided to stop over at his apartment and check on him. She entered the apartment and found him bludgeoned to death. Let's look at that apartment. These are now private condominiums, so I don't want to get myself in trouble but we'll see if we can take a quick look around. So right down here at the end, we'll be taking a look at apartment 132A. And this is it, this is location of Bob Crane's murder. On 
the afternoon of June 29th, 1978, co-star Victoria Ann Barry entered that door and found Bob Crane murdered. Here we see Bob's co-star, Victoria Barry, being escorted from the apartment shortly after discovering Bob's murdered body. Crane's son Robert testified that in the weeks before his father's death, Crane repeatedly expressed a desire to sever his friendship with Carpenter. He said Carpenter had become a hanger-on and a nuisance to the point of being obnoxious. My dad expressed that he just didn't need Carpenter kind of hanging around him anymore, he testified. His son also testified that the night before the murder, Crane called Carpenter and ended their friendship. Now, there were some problems with this murder because the Scottsdale Police Department was small. It was a small community, and they really weren't well equipped to handle this kind of a high-profile murder. Although no murder weapon was found, police suspected it to be a camera tripod. After examining Crane's videotapes, they tracked down Carpenter. They confiscated his vehicle, and they found blood smears in the car. They were found to match Bob Crane's blood type. But since they didn't have DNA testing back then, they couldn't prove it. And the Maricopa District Attorney decided there was not enough evidence to press charges. Although I suppose it could be argued, and it actually was in a 1994 trial, that there could have been any number of suspects, from angry husbands and boyfriends, right down to a wife who was fed up with Bob Crane's shenanigans. No one was ever arrested, until they reopened the case years later, in 1990. That led to the 1992 arrest of John Carpenter, and he was finally brought to trial in 1994. And although there was heavy circumstantial evidence, defense attorneys argued that there was nothing conclusive. In fact, the claim that the murder weapon was a camera tripod was just a supposition on the part of the police based on John Carpenter's occupation. Although a crime scene photo showed what was claimed to be brain tissue in John Carpenter's car, the evidence was misplaced and that was never proven. John Carpenter was acquitted and died four years later. And to this day, the Bob Crane murder case is officially unsolved. In a book he later wrote, Bob Crane's oldest son, Robert, claimed that there was only one person who could benefit monetarily from the murder, and that was Patty Olson. Who in the world was Patty Olson? She was better known as Sigrid Valdez. She was the beautiful actress who played in Hogan's Heroes. She was Colonel Clink's secretary and Bob Crane's second wife. But a lot of people argue, you know, this was not about money. This was a crime of passion because there was no break-in at the crime scene and there was nothing stolen. And today, Bob Crane and Sigrid Valdez share a permanent resting place with a tombstone that reads, Hogan and Hilda, together forever. But besides being a gifted actor, comedian, and radio DJ, Bob Crane was also a very talented drummer. And a little bit of trivia here, that distinctive snare drum that opens the theme song to Hogan's Heroes, that was Bob Crane playing the drum himself. Who do you think might be the best suspect in the murder of Bob Crane? To me, John Carpenter looks pretty guilty. I mean, he's a guy who really had no claim to fame other than these illicit activities with a television star. And when that was about to end, I could see how a person might just crack. But we don't know for sure because there just wasn't enough evidence. Well, thanks for joining me, everyone. I'd love to hear your comments down below as always. I encourage you to like and share the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that bell icon up above so you know when I post new videos. From beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona, I'm Mark with the Average Me Channel.